Hi, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we're going to take a quick walkthrough of the Octane integration into Unity. And you can see in this video, I'm using the courtyard scene, which is familiar to a lot of Unity users, but you've never quite seen it look like this before. All these renders were created directly in Unity using the Octane integration. So here I am in the courtyard scene. Let's start by loading up the Octane integration. So I'm going to go to the Octane menu and choose settings, and this will pull up the settings window. I'm going to press the load Octane button, and after a few moments, the integration will become available, and then I'll have all my settings ready to use. So we can move this out of the way, and in the hierarchy view, I'm going to choose the PBR render target. This contains all the settings for the Octane render within the Unity scene. The first thing I like to do is set my resolution. So to do that, I'm going to expand the film settings, and under width and height, I'm going to set it to 1280 by 720. And then I want to make sure that my camera matches the scene view. So I'll expand the camera and make sure that select camera is set to editor. That way, everything I render will match what I see here in the scene view. So once I have that set up, I can press the render button. This will pull up the render window, which I'll bring over here for my other monitor. And I'll just move this down a little bit. It takes a few moments to compile the scene, but once the scene is compiled, you can see the render begins here in the render view. And I'm not using any Octane materials at the moment. These are all Unity standard and Unity specular materials that are rendering, and they already look pretty nice. And you can see all the texture maps are working as well. So let's take a quick look at how we can adjust the lighting for the scene. So you can see I can select a new view, and as I move the view, uh, it updates in the render view. So I can keep this open while I'm working and see the changes as I make them in the Unity scene. So I'm going to select the direct light and start rotating it. And you can see in the render view that the, uh, the lighting looks much more realistic. We have a nice haze on it. So in the scene view, we have this kind of white circle for the sun. In the render view, we have this nice haze that we can control. And as I rotate the sun, you can see that we have these very beautiful shadows, some global illumination, nice reflections on the water, and so on. So next, I'd like to demonstrate how to create an octane material and apply it to the water in the scene. So in the asset panel, I'm going to right click and choose create material to add a new material. Let's name this new water. And then I'm going to drag the new water material on top of the water in the scene. You can see in the render view, it looks white because it's a standard white material with no texture maps. The next thing I need to do is convert it to an octane material. To do that, I'm going to go up to the shader menu and choose octane user shader. So now that I have it as an Octane material, I need to edit it using the Octane Node Graph Editor. To do that, I'm going to go into the inspector and press the View Source button. This pulls up Octane VR, and you can see within the Octane VR Editor, we have a view of the scene that matches what we see in our render view in the Unity Editor. So they're going to update simultaneously. So let's find the Material Out node. This is the node that connects the materials in the Octane Editor to the materials in the Unity Editor. To navigate the Node Graph Editor, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And you can also right mouse or middle mouse button drag to kind of navigate the view here. So I'm going to create an Octane material. To do this, I'm going to right click and choose from the pop-up menu, Material, Specular Material. So this is a good choice for water, or reflective, and transparent surfaces. I'm going to connect a wire from the bottom of the Specular Material node to the top of the Material Out node. And you can see it updates automatically. And we have a nice reflective, transparent surface here. I can adjust the reflection by maybe lowering the brightness of the reflection color. I can also tint the water blue by setting the transmission to a light blue color. And of course, there's a lot we can do within the node editor to make an extremely sophisticated and realistic material. But I'm going to keep it kind of simple for now. The next thing I'd like to do is add the normal map that was applied to the water texture and the original Unity shader to my Octane shader. So to do this, I'll go into the inspector and press Add Texture. And then I'm going to click on the circle here to pull up the texture browser. Now, the texture I'm looking for is named Ripple, so I'm going to type in Ripple in the search field and then pull up the Ripple normal map here. That's going to add it and make it available, but it's not going to connect it to the material yet. I need to go back into the editor 
to connect the normal map to the specular material. So in the editor here, I can connect a wire from my normal texture to the normal input on my specular material. Within the PBR render target node, we can also set the camera to baking camera, thin lens or panoramic. Thin lens is kind of a typical camera setup. Panoramic allows you to render 360s, which is great for working with VR. We also have post-processing effects. We can adjust the bloom and glare power, which adds some really nice photographic effects to the renders. Above the post-processing settings, we have the imager settings. And here we can find uh, sliders that allow us to adjust things like the gamma and the color response and the exposure. We also have the rendering kernel settings. So if I set this to direct lighting kernel, we'll get a somewhat less realistic rendering, but it'll be nice and fast. It's kind of like a brute force method of rendering. We also have info channels that allow us to render things like wireframe, ambient occlusion, Z depth, and so on. And you can see within the type menu, there's a lot of different info channel uh, rendering methods we can choose from. Both PMC and path tracing are unbiased rendering methods. PMC is the uh, highest quality, but it takes a little bit longer than path tracing. We can increase the quality of the rendering by increasing the maximum samples. So by increasing the max samples, you can create some really nice high quality renderings like you see in these images here. So I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough of Octane for Unity. You could download the scene that I've been using and experiment with the settings and see uh, the amazing power of using Octane for rendering your Unity scenes.